is Marielle from Aqua Mermaid. And today I'm sharing about mermen. I recently attended a conference called Mermagicon and there was an amazing panel about mermen and they were sharing their life, how they do their mermen life. And I think they're really underrepresented and people maybe guys feel a bit shy to show off they are mermen. And I think it's really good to share what they have to say. Then there was a few mermen on this panel, really interesting people. We had Eric Ducharme, from the Mer Taylor, Fernando or Nando of the Sea, Eric the Blick Tsunami, Chris Obraki or Merman Christian, and Tony Jackson. In this panel, the mermaids will share about their point of view about the mermaid industry, how they got involved, their story, and many great things they can share about their journey as a merman. Let's get right into it. Honestly, I would have to say the biggest issue is the sexism of it all. Like the fact that you see this performing, you see tank shows, you see uh, performers in aquariums, and it's like, you can't have mermaids without mermen. I mean, like, come on. So it's just like, although we're more rare to find, it's just, you'd be surprised how many companies only act like you can only have mermaids. Having to hide your bulge. <laughs> <laughs> it's natural. Because, you know, it's there, but sometimes when kids are around, you gotta, you know. And kids too sometimes. A lot of kids get scared of mermen. They run to the mermaid before the mermaid, but luckily for me, I've had, you know, kids come to me sometimes. I'm a guy that makes mermaid tails. <laughs> and I put on a tail. I know who I am. I own who I am. I have a persona. And if you don't like me, that's not my problem. That's your problem. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love anybody else, right? I mean, that, that's, just, that's just plain and simple. It shouldn't matter what your sexual preference is. It shouldn't matter what you identify as or what you don't identify as. It's, it's who you want to be. I cannot tell you how many times that I've been filming and, and doing stuff for documentaries and and I've been out on the dock and, and there's people that have come up and they're not sure what to expect. And you just, you just let it go because they don't, they don't really get it and they don't have to get it. You have to get it. And I think if, if you can display that confidence in yourself and they can see that, maybe those people will get it too. You gotta love yourself. You gotta be confident in yourself. And you, you just gotta not worry about what other people think. I know it's there and it sucks but it's just part of the game. Right. If you want to wear a tail, wear a tail. If you're a man, if you're a woman, if you don't know what you are, or you want to be one or the other or both, it doesn't matter. You know, you just got to be confident in it. So the way I understand it, uh, I treat the term mermaid and mermaiding, mermaiding. Um, I use the way the patriarchy handles womankind. Uh, a group, uh, a singular woman is a representative of womankind. Then a group of women are womankind. You add a man to the group, and all of a sudden it's mankind. What's that about? Well, male dominated woman. So, in that guise of mermaids being a female dominated industry, they've been doing this for a long time, pay that respect. And so I'm a singular merman. We are mermen and then it's mermaids, plain and simple. So don't get offended when somebody calls you a mermaid, you are. We are mermen, but we are mermaids. I get called female, sir, ma'am, all the time. So I was like, whatever, I might as well just, whatever. So I don't care, as long as they, you know, see that I'm a merm and I have a tail, that's all I care. I think sometimes we just have to put a label and title on everything, and I think it's, unnecessary right. I mean if, if it makes you feel comfortable yeah. that's fine right. but it's not necessary like I said it's all about just being confident mm -hmm. in who you want to be and feel I think the titles are relevant going with what you know my fellow brothers have said you really can't put a label on anything I mean this world is such a disaster right now and it when it really boils down it's like whatever makes you feel the happiest in here. I mean, look at us, we're 
we're a whole different variety up here. You know, we're whatever you want to you want to see it as a merman. Um, I think the best part for me is really when I get letters and emails from people all around the world. I mean, I've I've been around for quite some time, so and it's just knowing that you know, I when I started it, there, I really didn't really see any mermen at the time. I mean, Eric was Eric was around. But I was I wanted to appeal to everybody and just knowing here I am seven years later and still receiving messages and emails, knowing that I made an impact on someone's life. Like there's somebody that ran up and hugged me yesterday and they told me that they're here for this con solely to see me. So knowing that I made that little impact on someone's life and I inspired them to get into this business and to stay true to themselves, I think that's really been the greatest, the greatest payoff for me. I never thought that I was going to be able to inspire thousands of people and being on television and inspiring people who, I mean, there are so many people. Let's just put it this way. You know, the mermaid community is a tight knit, but it's really not. And I remember in one of my shows, this little kid, um, his father, well, him and his, this little kid has a speech problem and um, he doesn't do very well talking. And his father actually brought him out to my show two more times just to drive all the way out because he would not stop talking after he saw me. And it was the first time that he was really speaking in such sentences. And I, for me, it's an escape being underwater. And I, like you were saying, that weightlessness and just being away from all my problems and anything and being lost in that act of it all. Knowing that I can inspire that out of him and he kept coming back talking more and had this personality that was just jumping for joy, it, it, that moved me. But then in my own leisure, um, I love swimming in the ocean and I'll take random breaks where I swim up to the beach and people like literally freak out. They're just like, wait, what's coming up on the beach right now? <laughs> and um, this little girl, she was with her family and they were from, um, I forget what part of Africa, but she didn't speak very well English. And um, her father came up to actually translate and she was just like, I didn't know there were mermaids, let alone mermen, but black mermaids. And I mean, I, I'm mixed, I cater to many races and many religions within my family. But her saying that, and that being said by other people, I just want to inspire no matter what color you are, no matter what race you are, that you can be whatever you want to be. But unfortunately, we live in a world that kind of caters to certain things and the media and the influence and fashion and art and all of it. And little kids are growing up only seeing representations of a few things. They need to see more representations of color, of mixed, of different cultures. I don't care if you're Muslim and you have a wrap on your head or something and you're a mermaid. Like, you know, it's all about what you bring to the table and how you choose to inspire people. And that's what's important to me. So that'd probably be the best part of it all. Um, what I love about mermaiding is, like Eric said, it's all about the headspace. Uh, just being lost in yourself and in that moment uh, is just an amazing feeling being weightless and just flying through the water is just an amazing experience, personal meditative kind of experience. Uh, but also I love the fact that I get to give families and especially children their lives. Like just being able to see a little kid just explode with that magic in their eyes and just that's everything, you know? And you know, representing you know for the for the boys out there, you know, like yeah, like I have some of my coworkers filming the show, and to hear little boys being like, "I want to be a merman, I want to be a merman," like, "Mom, I want to be a merman," that's that's everything. That's why I do this. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know who is your favorite merman. I don't know all of them, but I really would like to meet more and get them involved in the mermaid community, see them at conferences or comment on videos. Uh, also, if you have any question, let me know. Uh, I can connect you with some mermen that I know. And uh, also feel free to share this video with some guys that are interested or you will feel will beneficiate from this. It's a good uh, push and uh, to give you motivation to do what you love. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for more mermaid and merman content. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Hi, this is Merman Christian. Welcome to Mermagicon 2020.
my name is Vando D of the Deep Blue Sea. Hi, I'm the Mitsubishi.